My name's Ed Piskor. I'm Jim Rugg. Today we're going to be talking about a Rosetta Stone for understanding the uh, the old image comics. But before we do that, a couple plugs. I'm plugging my latest graphic novel, The Plain Janes, available everywhere comics and books are sold. And the reason I want to bring this up now, it was on NPR's Best of Book Release for 2020. Perfect for young adult readers in your life. Perfect for the aspiring artist in your life because it's about a bunch of high school rejects who band together to do public art and uh, everything that results from that. So in stores now, wherever books are sold. Patreon.com slash Ed is where I'm serializing my Red Room comic strip. Uh, Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit, Jimmy. And issue one is on the Patreon for the early adopter right at this moment. Three bucks will get you the archive, but it'll see a print release in uh, 2021. Uh, we have the Ed Piscor Studio Edition as well is selling out quickly. And uh, you can find this uh, in better comic shops, but most likely you'll find it uh, online. Five pounds of book here. <laughs> About 200 scans directly from the original artwork in, you know, glorious artist edition type fashion. So, Jimmy, we're going to take a look at, uh, at Image Illustrated, man. September 1994. This was a crucial comic for me, man, because I kind of just get on board with Image Comics, like, sort of around this this time. I've had very, very few Im Image Comics uh, when, when this thing came out, but I started to accumulate them rather quickly, and... We've, we're on the record a lot on this channel talking about like the way the cartoonists describe their comics. You see no evidence of right. that in the body of the comics. This is what we would use <laughs> to figure out what the heck it is we really are looking at. And in some ways, it is it is boyish genius in a way because it's like, who wants to draw all of the uh, palace intrigue? We just want the fights. It's very we just true. want to draw the fights. Who wants to read it also at this time? <laughs> The, uh, the, co the cover is noteworthy, man, is one of these images burnt into my head by Eric Larson, where we get to see him draw all of the, uh, all of the Founding Fathers' uh, creations and Wildstar, Pitt, the a nice back view of uh, the Max. Look, look what he's trying to, how he's trying to capture those feet, man. This was before Image X month, so it was really cool to see uh, another one of the Founding Fathers' interpretations. Pretty early on, September 94 date puts it about... Uh, a year and a half into image publishing. Right. Uh, I did this piece, man, for, for Stan Lee's uh, little box gimmick that, that he was putting out, man. And it says Ed Pisker after Larson. A lot of people were like, well, what, what Larson comic? What Larson comic? And it wasn't a comic per se. It was stole it from this right here, man, because it's such a striking image to me, such an important image. And you could, like, you see how well read this motherfucker is, dude? I carried this thing with me. Uh, this is how... It's funny as, as you're flipping open... To this ad and i'm like oh it's always fun to see like a snapshot of you know what's going on at the time dooms four advertised for about three years in image books <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> that is not a good one to indicate time specificity you're going to get a lot of that man <laughs> look at that thing man rob was making some loot man i'm gonna say if they can support their own special edition and it's not the only image special magazine that would have been published obviously like everybody was on board and it is funny to see these kind of ads where they're just rolling out their spinoff books and mini series and everybody gets a title image was a phenomenon and this special i would i would put this up against the uh the wizard one any day in terms of content uh jim valentino you know we're on the record talking about how how he was a real believer in this movement and he drops a a little bit of an image origin story get a page of everybody how everybody's studio breaks down because it is unconventional it's it's a, it's a company and logo only you know yeah i ate all of this stuff up totally. you know i i mean the first probably two years of image I, I bought every image comic and i think a lot of image collectors did and here so here's the shit dude and they, you would have favorite creators and studios by the way oh for sure so this is the risotto stone stuff right here because it's like yeah, sometimes you even see these villains, and they don't—they're not even mentioned by name. So you at least get that in here, you know. It's funny too. Some of these characters' names would change, bedrock to bad rock. So even after publication, sometimes it wasn't uh, canon. And who knows? There are probably some inconsistencies in this write-up as well. Oh, for sure. And you can see how deep it's going, man. So like, like, did you ever know that Black Angel is Deathblow's villain? No, and I even had Deathblow number three. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you get that with all the all the major works. You get your 
your heroes and villains section. Then there's pretty substantial interviews with all of the Image Founding Fathers. You can tell this is around the period when uh, Rob Liefeld's coming back. This is artwork from from uh, Youngblood number uh, six. Wizard did a special that was a Comic-Con special around this time, maybe yeah. a little bit earlier, and it had all seven of the Wizard, or of the Image Founding Fathers doing their character and profile. It looks like it should be an Image special, and it is not. Right. If you're interested in the Image specials that are out there, this is a good one. Yeah. Because this really is the focus on the Image stuff. Totally. And in that glossy, wizardy, hero-illustrated kind of way, so it kind of, it kind of suits Image pretty well. Uh, it would be funny if Comics Journal had a similar version. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but this is this is pretty good. Like for a snapshot, an overview of what's going on a year and a half in with this phenomena, this this magazine sums it up pretty well. It's a snapshot, right? And you, we just saw it, man. Very very uh, full, meaty interviews with with all the fa the fathers. Uh, yeah, and they're in there enough to have these ideas of having a studio and having a, a universe of books that are spinning out. You know, this is almost Image 2.0, where they're dreaming big now. The first thing was the buildup of how's this going to work? How many are we going to actually sell? Now it's like, we're an institution. Absolutely. Let's expand. Absolutely. Like, this right here is like a cover to, like, Wildcat's Adventures. And the Adventures, uh, you know, piece of title was always indicative of animated series adaptation books. So it's like, they're working on that stuff. Little J. Scott Campbell cameo appearance man so so gen interesting 13. too pretty still early on i mean this is gen 13 miniseries days yeah you know this is pre witchblade so the the big top cow book is just cyber force yeah that's funny to think of what top cow becomes and like they, i guess they took the longest maybe to find their footing you know i think of witchblade and darkness as being their you know more of their book check than cyber force check this it. out we, we we have a book called the darkness coming out which is a single character book written by ann nocenti and then uh, highlighting the Walt Simonson uh, Cyberforce book. Pretty weird, yeah. Got to get Wilson there. Yeah, you do see the and th those those kind of mentions though of like creators who I don't think Anacenti ever ended up doing anything. <laughs> no. This uh, I I definitely saw this stuff before I saw a Pit comic, and this image just fucking blew my mind, man. What a cool character design. I loved Pitt. I can remember like finding a way to get to the comic book store the day Pitt came out because I had to have it. And it was before, it was like an hour away, the comic book store. It wasn't an easy thing to put together. See, now, now obviously I've, I've seen this a million times and I'm hip, but like I look at this and the line quality and I'm like, yeah, Jeff Matsuda did that. That's what I thought. Is it not him? I, of course it is. Oh, okay. All right. Of course it is. I'm just saying it was <laughs> the level of dork we are. <laughs> not a bad... Uh, not a bad interpretation of these characters. No, and a pretty good dragon fin. Yes. You know, and, and somebody asked, what's a good dragon fin? It's perpendicular to the forehead when it comes out. So if you see him front on, that, that point does not go above his cranium. It comes out, and then it tapers in the back. Yeah, essentially what the, the bad fins, they leave the front piece off. So, so, like, they start the fin here. Yeah, it's like a receding fin line. <laughs> Give dragon a five head. And and this is the weird stuff, right? Like where we're getting into the uh, we're getting into the peripheral image cats. Man, see, we got Al Al Gordon and uh, was it Jerry Ordway? Yeah, Jerry Ordway doing the Wild Star Although stuff. Although Ordway leaves after the first miniseries, and there's a second round with I think Chris Marinin, maybe. I believe you. Yeah, Ordway's there for one book. Al Gordon is, is there the whole time. I think around this time, like the Jay Lee stuff, I definitely had Young Blood Strike Files. Uh, and I got Young Blood Strike Files before I got Young Blood Comics, man. So I was aware of Jay Lee. That's a nuts introduction. Yeah, like, that's a crazy enough comic to begin with. But if that's your intro to Young Blood, all this stuff looks really great, though. That that Wildcats trilogy, which is pretty much simultaneous with Young Blood Strike File, yeah, it's another good looking piece. You know, like he interprets those characters just as well as he does Chapel. The color on those is really beautiful. Joe Chiodo is like really showing out, man. Uh, we have a color comic called Black and White by uh, Art T. Bear. Yeah, does that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> and this is the one man that made Chap Chap Yap my my absolute hero because this is ninety four. I'm eleven. I'm eleven or twelve years old, depending on on uh, where where the year is in conjunction with uh, July when I'm checking this out, man. And I'm reading about a dude who's nineteen years old, man, who's kind of uh, who's kind of making his dreams come true, like. 
I that's, can't even imagine doing that at 19. That's just a couple years away from me. You know what I'm saying, man? Like, like I there's kids in a neighborhood that are close to that age. So it it, it, just, it felt so tangible that I could become a cartoonist like very soon. Like that's a, a lot of the value that um that this this whole interview and stuff had for me, man. His style but, is such a more rigorous style. Like Merritt Michaels was Brigade. That was like the first spinoff that Liefeld put out. And it's really sparse. Like it is draw this as fast as you can. Yeah. At least that's how it reads. But whenever you see this, it's like, wow, he's drawing backgrounds. He's drawing different poses, different clothes. Like that's a young dude who's really applying himself. There's a, There are, are a lot of marks on his pages. He gets into his work schedule here. 12, even 14 hour days, man, usually get in at 10, work till about seven at the very earliest. Sometimes he'll work till midnight. You know, talking about sort of how he broke into the game, uh, how Dutch is his character and how he owns the, the copyright and there will very soon be a Dutch action figure. Uh, this this was this was a fun piece, man, because I remember looking at some of these guys like, what am I even looking at here? <laughs> like, I don't know what that is and I don't even know what that thing is right there. That's awesome. <laughs> Todd Nock, dude who won a uh, Heroes Illustrated uh, cover contest, man. And, and this that's what this image is right here. Wins the contest and then gets a call from Rob Liefeld, man, about doing some, some I work. think he was an art institute of like Dallas or something, you know, come out of there. And I and we would know all this stuff because like you would just pour over whatever interviews, it's whatever all in you here. could find. It's right? all in And here. it was like, what's the blueprint? Like, how do I do this stuff? Yeah. His color, like, he he disobeyed all the hatching and all that stuff that was very popular at the time, so it's pretty much very stark black and white, and that computer color was flattering to his, his open style. But also, that is wild looking. I love it. <laughs> I love it so much. And his, his Newman color, like, it would be that. It would be radial blur on every bubbly muscle. <laughs> and then even, like, every jowl and all of it, man. Only one page, two pages with all those guys. Just one page with this, uh, this J. Scott Campbell kid who's going to be drawing this, uh, this mini series called Gen Thirteen. Yeah, I don't think people realize what what they had there. He got good quick, and Gen Thirteen really, I think, is the Wildstorm book that comes out of Wildstorm. You know, I think it's probably everybody's favorite book out of Wildstorm. And I realize there'll be exceptions at like Wet Works or Team Seven or something, but I mean, it was so popular. You know, like it has hundred issue volumes that right. came out of there. You know, like that. I always think of like they launch popular. You know, they become popular, and then it's a legacy that it just keeps. It's they just kept relaunching it and kept putting it in print because it had that kind of momentum. That's that seems to be the way comics goes. Period. Like like Superman and Batman are that way. Like I they think, were popular in the thirties, and all of that sort of coasted them for. 70 years. I think uh, Everett Hartso's Razor is that way because that's a book that ran, I don't know, 80 issues or something through all the Bad Girl Outlaw stuff and a lot of books came and went and publishers came and went and that book was around the longest. I think it launched and it was just a huge launch and it's yeah. like, that's the momentum. Just keep keep going. We've got Razor fans. In the meantime, let's dissect this Jeff Matsuda troll image because that's a weird drawing, man. That's a, that's a normal sized human skull on this very <laughs> weird little body it's a troll man it's beyond a troll it's a it's a head with arms and it has no trunk to it it's funny because you know it's wolverine's head and for a long time they would draw wolverine as being very short and then that went out the window sometime in the early 90s but in a way it's almost wolverine because it's it's a short wolverine <laughs> that is wolverine right i love that that rob Give liefeld, some claws i love that rob liefeld had two wolverines because because there was a uh, maskless troll but then there was one of the blood strike dudes called Deathlock. Or something, but he's a red Wolverine. You familiar? Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't. It's I forget his name, and I'm not going to pull it out. But I do know. Yeah, <laughs> there there were those versions. I liked Troll's uh, helmet. You know, it was like that bullet metal looking helmet that he would put on that changed the shape of his head, unlike like a Wolverine mask. Yeah, with the little Iron Man it's like, cool. dash eyeballs. Larry Martyr Bean World. Yeah, he becomes Think about the odd fit. He, but he becomes the dad, the daddy who's yes. who's uh, tasked with trying to hold these guys accountable for what they're promising and what i really mean by that is like he's just the guy who's like okay you say the book's gonna come out in september why don't you have it come out by november at, at the very least man yeah and he's executive director is his title for a while he comes out of like i want to say moon dogs was that the big there was a big series of shops in the midwest 
and he was connected closely with them. So like he was into the direct market and sort of the mechanics of the direct market, which is part of what he brought to image. Stephen Platt gets a two page, two page wow. piece. The interview is really good too, man, because he, it's the supernova period. He's right, right in the mix of it. And it's, it's very odd. It's a very odd position for him to be in. And it's, you know, he's kind of in the right place for, for some of the stuff he's going through. Cause he's super young and he's super popular and successful. And in here, he's just like, I really wish I had a little bit more time to develop because a lot of people are seeing these books and I know I'm not doing things the way I want. They're not, it's not coming out the way I want it to. And it's, there's a million of these things out there and it kind of freaks me out. That's real funny. We'll, we'll have to do a dive into him. I mean, at that point he had what, five issues published? You know, this is his first profit book. So before that five issues of Moon Knight, it really is a guy that's like, talk about, there aren't a lot of overnight successes in comics. He's probably one of the few real examples of like, holy shit, here he is six months later, the totally. hottest artist in comics. So we're branching out, man. We're licensing Wildcats animated series and, and check that out right there, dude. Youngblood animated. And this is where it is confirmed like that, that Rob Liefeld put 800 thousand uh, dollars into the production of that 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 stuff and here's some more ancillary stuff but it's still early enough that we only get prototypical glimpses of todd toys it's so interesting like everybody's doing everything maximum sound what is this like a cd or something it's being sound cd collecting the max issues one through eight what the heck is even you know the stuff they're doing on on uh, wizard episodes we're talking about uh, there were little headlines for cd romix and uh, that might be very close to that. I love these. Several of these sculptures, I think, are, are really badass. And I kind of wish I had picked up, like, the Savage Dragon one or something. I think they're all Claiborne Moore or... Uh, Randy Bowen. Yeah. But they look really great. And then the skateboards, the Shadowhawk skateboards. We've seen ads for those. Super famous skateboard around these parts, man. I knew several dudes who had the Shadowhawk skateboard. And what better skateboard to foretell the uh, career of some skateboarders, man? Broken backs. <laughs> Big crack on that. And then, dude, you can't have... Every 19... parent's worst nightmare. You can't have mid-90s image talk, man, without a little price guide gimmick. Uh, what's worth something? Is there any <laughs> uh, any highlights in there? Spawn number one, you know, one of the most uh, popular uh, image comics that sold in millions and millions of copies, just went up in value, eleven seventy five. You know what would perplex me is I would have the Wizard magazines that would correspond with the exact month. And I'd be like, how come it's worth more in Wizard than it is in Heroes? I just don't get Did it. Did you ever figure that out? <laughs> I think they call that scam. Yeah. And uh, boom, there it is, man. The Rosetta Stone. Image oh, X Month. How about that, dude? For forthcoming. Came out, uh, the Image X books came out like October, November. Yeah. So it's so it's uh, right in league. What a that. great promo item for Image, this, this issue. And like you, I love this stuff. And like you said... That's where you learn the story. Yeah. You know, the rest of it was just like cool drawings and pinups, which I dug. But this is how you knew that Youngblood was a government team. Absolutely, man. Anyhow, I had to dust this off. We we're going to do a Stephen Platt a specific episode. And I was referencing that that interview. Got to do your research. And was like, this this thing is the, the result. This is what I used, man. So anyhow, ready to bounce? That's it. Okay, Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when the next vids are available. What do you got in stores, Jimmy? Pick up Plain Janes for the art lover or young adult reader in your life. Street Angel, Deadliest Girl Alive, perfect all ages superhero action comic, and Ninja on a Skateboard. What else do you want? And Octobrian in 1976, the world's first blacklight comic, available wherever better comics are sold. Patreon.com slash Ed is where I'm serializing my current comics project, Red Room. Three bucks get you the archive on that. Issue one is available to read in total right now. New strips every Tuesday. The X-Men Grand Design Omnibus is is completely sold out at uh, our warehouse level, but it is in shops, uh, so get it while you can, uh, but it will be reprinted in 2021 at some point, not before Christmas. Though. It's like the hot Christmas toy. Yeah, agreed, man. You have Tickle Me Elmo, you have that little uh, remote control Mario Kart that's out right now that's pretty freaking dope, you have X-Men Grand Design Omnibus, and the uh, Ed Pisker Studio Edition. Giant big book, five pounds of comic book artwork uh, scanned, at a very high resolution, directly from uh, the original Sotheby's best-selling artwork. Uh, get get that while you can. You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video to keep up with everything we're doing. You can find Cartoonist Kayfabe merchandise and t-shirts at the links below this video. Give them one more set of marching orders, Jimmy. We'll be out. Read more comics.